Hi, good evening and welcome to Cooking Uncovered. It's a miserable day here in North Vancouver and my poor husband, Carl, has a cold, so I'm going to make him some delicious pierogies to make him feel better, I hope. So, why don't you come along with me and uncover the secrets behind great pierogi making. First thing we're going to do, of course, is we're going to wash our hands. Because as you know, all, a, lot of, a lot of contamination is prevented by hand washing. So it's really important that you continually wash your hands when we're trying to keep our food safe, of course. Now, pierogies are a very funny animal because the filling can be anything you want. Now, I have a filling here already, and it is simply steamed potatoes, green onions, cumin, salt, pepper, and dry curd cottage cheese. Now, I know a lot of you have never heard of dry curd cottage cheese, but honestly, once you've tried them in pierogies, it's absolutely delicious. It's just one of the best tastes. So I just want to show you how to make that. So in this, in this um, bowl, I have a tablespoon of cut green onions. I have one third of a cup of dry curd cottage cheese. And this is what the dry curd cottage cheese looks like. And into that, we're going to rice our potatoes. So this is my, my handy dandy ricer that I got for a steal at one of the discount stores. So I've steamed these potatoes and now they're not quite so hot. They're a little bit hot. So all we're going to do now is just remove the skin. I don't often peel potatoes unless I really want a creamy mashed potato because if you're even ricing the potatoes, if you rice the potatoes, the peels stay off. Um, the ricer actually uh, excludes the um, peel from going through. So that's one potato. I'm going to rice that right into the bowl with my... Look at how that works. Isn't that beautiful? What a great idea, huh? Ricers tend to take all the impurities, all of the lumps out of your potatoes. So it's a great way to make your potatoes very smooth and creamy. As I say, I try to get as much of the, the uh, skin off as I can and then right into the bowl. Now, to that I'm going to add salt and pepper to, to taste. I like pepper a lot. Salt I hold back on wherever possible. Wash my hands again. hands clean. What I need is one of those no-touch faucets, obviously. To this I'm going to add cracked pepper and salt. A little bit of salt. Some cumin. I love the taste of cumin. I think that'll go in well. And I'm going to give that a stir. To that, I want to add one egg, which I have in the fridge. It's nice to bind your uh, filling. So one egg. And that goes and give that a stir. This isn't a lot of filling, but it's certainly enough for um, the batch of dough that I've made. Now, my dough I've already made, and my dough is, it's the simplest dough in the world. In the world. It is half a cup of sour cream to three quarters of a cup of flour. Now, how easy could that be? Seriously, half a cup of sour cream into three quarters of a cup of flour, you mix that in the bowl and you form it into this great dough that is so soft and so pliable and it comes out like this. It's great. So this is the second half of the dough because I've already started making my pierogi. So my, my filling is ready. So I'm just going to roll this out because I started rolling out earlier. With, um, with my flour, here it is. Take my flour board and just roll your dough out till it's quite thin. Keep your rolling pin, keep your rolling pin flour so that you don't stick to the board. And then simply with your whichever cookie cutter you want, just cut out rings. It is that simple. I can hear my neighbor out there blowing the leaves. They spend a lot of time next door blowing leaves. I don't know, I don't think they ever cook like we do. So, I've got my circle. Now, with my handy dandy, with my handy dandy, uh, um, what's this called? Whatever this is called. 
water around the outside, and then with my teaspoon, I'm just going to take some filling and put it on the inside of my dough. And then, crinkle cut that there like that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how that works. I like the crinkle cut because it makes it the finish really nice. So that goes on my board. Now let's just talk about, um, I was kidding, this is called a pastry brush. Let's talk about food safe just for two seconds. And I know you lot know a lot, hopefully about food safe. But our job as cooks is to make sure that we feed people and they don't become sick from our food. That's the whole point. So we have to keep our food out of the danger zone. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, that means that wherever possible, our food has to be kept at the right temperature. So that means that the minute we stop, we finish with what we're doing, we need to either cook these or get them into the cooler so they're at the right temperature. We've got to keep our food out of the danger zone. So the danger zone is between 4 and 60 Celsius. You know, and body temperature is right in there. And you know, of course you know that, oops, oops, forgot one thing. Of course you know that uh, pathogens grow best at body temperature, but it's right smack in the middle of the danger zone. So our job is to make sure that we keep all the food we're cooking out of the danger zone until we cook it. And then after we cook it, if we have to hold it hot, then we make sure we keep it really hot. So the rule is keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold. And nobody will ever get sick from your food. So these are my pierogies. Aren't they beautiful? So that's part one of pierogi making. So let's just go over that again. The dough, seriously, is a half a cup of sour cream. And this makes about 12 pierogies, so for two people. Half a cup of sour cream, three quarters of a cup of flour. Into the bowl, mix it up, put it in a, a ball, wrap it up in plastic, leave it to the side while you do your filling. I've got my, your potatoes steaming. One small potato, um, about a cup of potatoes, one third of a cup of uh, dry curd cottage cheese. And you can add an egg if you want. I just did, I did add an egg today, it does bind it nicely. And to that, I've added salt and pepper to taste and about an eighth of a teaspoon of cumin, one of my favorite, um, my favorite, favorite flavors. So, and then I'm going to line these up and in part two, we're going to cook them, we're going to boil them, and then I'm going to fry them and I'm going to show you how to present them with the best tasting sour cream and green onion and it's delicious. Everybody just, they just love, they love it. Everybody loves this. So, happy dough making, happy pierogi making, and thanks for coming and watching Cooking Uncovered, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, watch for part two. See you later, bye.